from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for a trip. Uh, well, it's time for a sleepy look at the good the the, the TV show. The it's not the TV show. The show, the program, the good place. But I don't think we'll actually. We don't actually like. A, I don't know. We're talking covering season two, so I guess it's not a spoiler to say. We won't be in the good place. We won't be in the bad place. I don't, this, there may be a visit to the medium place. And I'm not sure, I guess we're in a version of the the place, like it's the architects, the neighborhood that has a bunch of numbers is where we are. But hopefully you'll just be yawning and snoozing and breathing and breathing restfully, because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Hey, everybody, you know the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me are sleep phones, and you can get your own set of Sleep With Me branded sleep phones. Ashley's got a couple new designs up there, so you got some amazing choices in headbands. They've got three different models. It is the most comfortable way. Headphones inside a soft headband. They got sleep phones wireless. They have an original recorded version, and you can get them all. The only way to get them is at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones we've got a bunch of different ones up there sleeping with my boyfriend uh, sleepy sheep and a uh, sleep with me logo ones at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones but if you use the promo code sleep with me you'll also get a discount so sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones get a discount use that code sleep with me and don't miss out perfect gift uh, to ask for for yourself or, or to give someone or to give yourself a gift you say well i want to be comfortable then you don't have to have your phone in bed you get to have it across the room you could use Bluetooth. So you can get those at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, All Form. You've heard me talk about Helix before and how much I love my Helix mattress. Well, Helix has left the bedroom. They've started making sofas and they launched a new company called All Form and they're making the best sofas we've ever seen. It is so easy to customize. Their sofas use premium materials, but they come at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores. You can pick your fabric. It is spill, stain, and scratch resistant. So you pick your color. You get to pick the color of the legs. You pick the size, the shape to make sure it's perfect for you and your home. You could just order a chair, love seat, all the way up to a big sectional. There's something for everyone. This is going to be the sofa that is a part of your life. It grows with you. It's the hub of my home. Movie night, journaling before bedtime, reading, meditating, having real moments where my daughter and I share with one another. That all happens on the all form. And the all form sofas are delivered directly to your home with fast free shipping you know in the past you had to wait for shipping and then you had to have someone put it together and now with all form it takes just three to seven days to arrive in the mail and you can assemble it yourself in just a few minutes no tools needed and if getting a sofa without trying in a store sounds risky you don't gotta worry you get a hundred days to decide if you want to keep it that's more than three months and if you don't love it they'll pick it up for free and give you a full refund and like i said this sofa is going to be a part of your life for a long time I've already had so many special moments on my all form sofa and they offer a forever warranty that's literally forever. So to find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash sleep. All form is offering 20% off all orders for our listeners at allform.com slash sleep. So that's it. Allform.com slash sleep. Get over there, place your order and share with me some photos. I want to see how your all form is a part of your life. Allform.com slash sleep. 20% off all orders for our our listeners. Thanks, everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Have you tried the Name Your Price tool yet? It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. 
Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporters on the one part of the podcast where I pop my peas, if you please. I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors. That's really how we're able to be here for you free twice a week on all platforms. The sponsors and the listeners who support them enable that, empower that. Uh, so we're not just on one app only or you got to pay for the show only free twice a week. And that's why I'm here right now is I'm recruiting. If you supported a sponsor, please, please let them know about it. Make sure to use our link, use our code. And then let me know about it. Tag me on social media with the sponsor or fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Even when you wake up tomorrow, be like, let me just check that website out. Then let me know about it. I'll send you some stickers. And that is the first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. I need to, <laughs> looking for Sleepy Support. Uh, if, you, uh, if, you're, if you need support right now, in addition to falling asleep, uh, the extra support, there's links to resources in the show notes you can connect with right now, including international resources. It's about being a part of a community community and building community and taking steps to be a part of positive change, saying Black Lives Matter, saying stop API hate with our actions. So there's links to resources uh, in the show notes. And one of the organizations I support is the Student Freedom Initiative, and that's at studentfreedominitiative.org, or you could use the link right in our show notes. And with Student Freedom Initiative's uh, income contingent funding options and their support services for the students and their schools, the Student Freedom Initiative takes an innovative and holistic approach that reimagines how students pay for college. You can learn more and you can support them at studentfreedominitiative.org. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through. When the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your narrators. Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud that we could dance. Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and I like banana. Leah does the transcripts. Thanks, Mystery Bard. Uh, don't forget, merch, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Get your uh, enamel pin, get your mug, get your winter uh, sweats, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. What do you say? We slow it down and get on with the show. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed and turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts or feelings or physical sensations. So that could be, you know, things on your, your thoughts, like things on your mind from the past, the present, or the future. Like anticipatory thoughts or planning thoughts. Those are kind of the ones I'm dealing with. So I got, you know, like, but it could be, you know, so those could, it could be feelings related to those thoughts or, or emotions that are just there, or maybe they're unrelated to They say, well, I'm just having these feelings. It could be physical sensations, changes in time or temperature. I'm co- I've got a lot of these covered right now. Uh, or routine, changes in time. I mean, it could be just your work schedule. Uh, so far, I've checked off almost everything. I'm wondering if I can do the talk about that in a way that's still soothing and in our intro. But so, changes, whatever's keeping me awake, I'm here to take your mind off of that. And if you're new, I am so glad you're here. And I really, really hope this podcast helps. It does not work for everybody. 
and it almost works for no one on the first try. Now, there are people, I know there's listeners that scoots work for me on the first try. I know, I know. But I just want to make sure people like understand, hey, this just might not work for you on the first try because it's very different. And I'm going to talk about that all coming up here. But the ma- reason I make the show is because I know how it feels there in the deep dark night if you can't sleep. And I wish this podcast worked for everybody, but you know, everybody's got a little bit different taste and a little bit different thing that works for them. But here's the thing, whether the show works for you or not, and the reason I'm glad you're here is because I can tell you this message, you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve the rest you need. And I really hope I can provide that because it'll mean, like, it's so rewarding to know I can help somebody else out, somebody like you who's struggling because I've been there recently over and over and over again. But uh, even when the times I'm sleeping good, because I say, well, geez, I know how that feels. And and, and you deserve getting that rest because I know, I, one, I know how it feels, but also I know that if you get the rest you need, you're going to feel a little bit better. Your life's going to be a little bit more manageable. And maybe you could go out there and flourish or just not be dreading bedtime and dreading getting up. That's important to me. So I just wanted to point that out as I'm really glad you're here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones and pointless meanders, which means uh, my, you know, my voice is not perfect. Uh, it's a little bit different. I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. It's going to feel like this show never gets started and never goes anywhere. And I'm talking nonsense and I never get to the points. And that's kind of part of the point. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep. So a couple of things that go along with that, uh, especially if you're new. Like I said, it takes a few tries to get used to the show because this is a podcast you don't really listen to. You just barely pay attention. Kind of like it's it's background noise you could listen to, which is, I guess, different because you say, well, that's not background noise. And I say, well, it's like you can kind of drift in and out, like kind of like TV in another room that doesn't get on your nerves. Like uh, when I'm recording this, it's like the summer vacation season, which it won't be when you hear this. But like I, I have memories and a lot of people do of maybe staying in a hotel or a cabin or what they call on the East Coast a camp, which is not, it doesn't have an, it, it's like a cabin, somewhere between a shack and a cabin. It's not like a cabin because it's not made of logs, but they always had thin walls and you could hear your parents watching TV. Maybe it was tennis or maybe it was like a show that was on at 10 o'clock that, you know, you had to be in bed as a kid. I don't know what they would have been watching. Remington, it would have been the summer. So I don't know if there was like Remington Steel repeats or Riptide. But you could be listening to that uh, as you fall asleep, and you kind of found it soothing for some reason, I think maybe contextually. But I don't know. Like I'm saying, you could just kind of barely listen to me. And that does take some getting used to. You say, okay, but when are you going to get, when's the story going to start? And I said, well, eventually we'll get there, and then I'll back, backtrack and get mixed up. Uh, Cause you say, wait a second, you're going to put me to sleep by talking about the good place. I say, yeah, I'll be talking about it in a not like, uh, I mean, I love the show, so I'll be talking about it in a good way, but in a way where I'm trying to read my handwriting. I can't re- decipher that. Then I'll say, what was that again? How did I forget that character's name? So it's a podcast you don't really listen to. It's also strangely enough, I guess that kind of goes along with it. Well, I don't really, I'm not really here to put you to sleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar burr, your neighbor, your boar bra, your boar bestie. I'm here to be your friend in the deep dark night to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff, not really to put you to sleep. So if you can't sleep for some reason, I'll be here to the end, or if you fall asleep right away and you're not listening to me, I'll be here to the very end for you. I'm here to keep you company whether you're awake or asleep. So those are two important things. You know, you deserve a good night's sleep. I said that earlier. The other thing that can throw new listeners off uh, greatly is the structure of the show. And the show is designed in a very specific way, but it's also flexible. So as you become a regular listener, you can kind of change how you listen. 
But the show is structurally designed. It's very different than other podcasts, uh, but some things are similar. So it starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or boys and girls, uh, which is one of my favorite pies. Uh, it's made with boys and berries and fluff. It hasn't been designed yet, except in the spur of my, my imagination just came. I said, wait a second, you might be onto something. I say, okay, well, maybe we'll do that later. Um, so the greeting is there, so you feel seen and welcomed in. You say, okay, well, let me come by and check this place out. Then there's support for the listener, like organizations you connect, connect with, support for the community, and support for the show. That's how we're able to be here for you for free, but there's also resources for you as a listener. And the listeners, the support there, and then the support after the intro are there. So the podcast, yeah, can be here for you free, can come out twice a week. Those are part of our goals. Uh, then after that is the intro, which sometimes new people get mixed up. They say, oh, is this all housekeeping? I say, no, the intro is kind of a show within a show where I explain what the podcast is. I go off topic. I get mixed up. I take for, like a... Uh, and about 2 to 3% of people start the show at like 20 to 22 minutes and because and, they skip the intro. And then about two or 3,000 people listen to story-only episodes on Patreon. But the other few hundred thousand people, they like the structure of the show. So they kind of listen. And the intro actually can be... There's people that only listen to intros. Uh, there's actually like a few thousand people that only listen to intros. So it's kind of like, uh, it's a show within a show that never gets started. And there's really no, you say it's all tell and no show. And I say, you got that right. Uh, let me, I don't even know what to say to that other than, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, so yeah. Um, <laughs> those last few were, uh, unintentional. Those are bonuses that my brain just provided. Despite me saying, let's get moving to the point. I said, uh, well, uh. So, oh, so that's the intro. It just goes, it feels like it goes on and on. It's different every time because I have a theory that our brains just adjust. That's why other sleep stuff never worked for me that I tried because my brain would say, well, I know where this is going now. So now I'm going to tell you about all the stuff that's keeping you awake, which for me right now is like anticipation because I'm going, I'm driving someone somewhere tomorrow and I have to get up early. And then it's like, are you going to be able to fall asleep? I'm also off my routine. I'm not sleeping at home. So, you know, all those things can add up and, uh, yeah. So it's nice to have someone ideally to keep you company and take him and say, Hey, well, it's, that, that is, that does stink. Or, Oh, you work on the fourth shift and you changed your work shifts well, that, that kind of stinks. Let me just be here to tell you a story and keep you company because you and your sleep is important. So the intro is the beginning of that just so your mind can't adjust and say, wait a second, because I never, I'm, I've never managed to talk. I mean, I talk about the same things in different ways all the time, but I've never managed to get through an intro in an efficient, even this one, I said, let's try to do this in like 10 minutes and I don't think we're even close. So that's the intro. Then there's business between the intro and the episode. That's just, again, so we can be here free twice a week, and that's just how podcast structure works. And then there's a story. Tonight it'll be, I'll cover a couple episodes of The Good Place. I'll talk about, you know, Michael's ties. I'll try to, like, uh, you know, talk about gardens. And I'll forget a lot of stuff. And I'll read my handwriting, which is a bit like some sort of strange poetry. But with, you know, without the, without the poetic part, strange ramblings. Uh, so, and then there's some thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show. I think that's kind of everything. The reason I make the show is because you deserve a good night's sleep. And yeah, because I know how it feels like, holy cow, last night. Oh, temperature. That was the other one. So I'm not sleeping at home. This is my first time sleeping in this bed that I'm sleeping on. I got here yesterday and then I'm leaving tomorrow morning. And then my host, which is someone directly related to me, who I won't name, they said, hey, just set the temp. We're in a we're, we're in a very warm area in a very warm time of year. And it's just the two of us. Uh, and we're sleeping in separate rooms. They said, hey, uh, you know, you're the guest. Uh, 
and it's a family member, so you can, you're allowed to utilize full guest privileges, in my opinion. And they said, set it to whatever temperature you want. I want you to be comfortable, though they're a family member, right? So there's also that aspect. So, so I said, okay. And I actually didn't set it to the temperature I wanted to. I'm a 68-degree person uh, in a hotel room, I guess. But I said, well, this is their house. So, like they had it at, I think, uh, 74. I said, I'll set it to 71. And, you know, I'll make that work. I'll have minimal coverage on my body. Uh, there was a ceiling fan, which is nice. And then about, you know, I woke up. I, this, I don't want to, this is just, uh, this is my thing, you know. So I'm trying not to describe it too in depth. But I was still a lot of waking, and, and but it, that was more related to the new bed and all that stuff. And different pillow, like, holy cow. I never even thought until I make this podcast, I say, how many freaking different types? Can, can we just, can we cut down on the styles of pillows uh, people have? Uh, so anyway, so, but then about three, four in the morning, I had kind of settled down. I'd gotten my pillows sorted out or their pillows sorted out and my sheets sorted out. Somehow in my tossing and turning, I got most of the pillowcases off by accident but then I noticed the temperature, and I thought I'd heard that my family person moving around. And I said, oh, boy, it's hot in here. And then I said, it's just your imagination, man. Like, you're just, you know, it's just you. And I said, I don't know. It feels like it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like 71 or 68 in here. And I said, no, nah, it's just your imagination. And then the time was crawling by, and I went out there, and it was at, like, 76. And I said, holy moly. Uh, and they said, well, if I lower it again, then I'm going to hear them get up again. I said, let's not engage in this ridiculousness. So I just went back to bed. I did manage to fall back asleep because I did kind of like a version of the podcast in my own head. And then this morning, I mean, this is a direct family member. So it's, again, this is all part of our social compact. But they said, how'd you sleep? I said, well, not very good. I got really hot. Uh, and they said, well, geez, you should have, and I said, uh, well, well, I did set it to this temperature. And then now, I, and they said, oh yeah, it's not at that temperature now. And I, and we all laughed together because we accept one another and we love one another. Uh, and that's the truth about the show too. It's like, uh, but tonight uh, I'll get up as many times as necessary to lower that thing down. We're going to be at 70 for, uh. So anyway, I guess because I'm not a perfect person, right? I'm flawed on multiple levels, uh, and that's okay. Like, uh, and it's okay that that person, you know, that's why this is this is the game of life. Oh boy, being human, and if the podcast can help any of that, uh, holy cow! How much better would it have been if I had a sleep podcast, or if I thought to turn on one of the sleep podcasts at sleepwithmepodcast.com/slash no thank you for people the podcast doesn't work for. That would could have interrupted all those changes, and maybe I just would have slept through the night. Uh, so I hope I can keep you company or help you fall asleep. I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate you checking the show out. Uh, thank you so much. I work hard. I yearn and I strive, and here's how I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. Thanks. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about Brooklyn and one of our longest sponsors, one of the sponsors I love getting in bed with. I just changed my sheets last night. So refreshing, so beautiful. And there's never been such a thing as too much comfort. And if you could use a little bit more, you are in luck because Brooklyn's biggest sale of the year is coming this weekend, which means serious savings on essentials for creating your dream space. This sale is big news for your company. Comfort. Brooklinen's entire set of super soft, seriously cozy essentials is going on sale this weekend. Brooklinen was created to bring dreamy comfort to every corner of your space at prices so affordable they may make you pinch yourself. And shopping doesn't get any easier than with Brooklinen bundles. You save more when you stock up on essentials for your space. And now is the time to get gifting. Get a gift, get a great deal on it. Because there's deals on items for everyone on your list, whether you're 
shopping sense for a candle lover. You're grabbing a gift card, the old gift that keeps on giving. This kind of comfort is always a hit for the holidays. And Brooklinen's comfort game is unmatched. Their lineup just keeps getting better. They have five-star sheets where they started out, but they've added a cozy collection of must-haves, uh, classic loungewear, dreamy decor. So do not miss out. Brooklinen's biggest sale of the year starts this weekend. Get yourself some of those plush towels. I love the plush towels. I love the loungewear. It's loungewear season. And then get yourself a sheet set. Holy cow, sliding in there is absolutely amazing. And if you miss the sale, if you're still listening, you could still save. Go to brooklinen.com and use the promo code Sleep with me for twenty dollars off your purchase of a hundred dollars. That's B R O O K L I N E N dot com and use that promo code Sleep with me to get twenty dollars off your purchase of a hundred dollars. But if you're hearing this right now, get over to their website and save this weekend. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Native Deodorant. And one of my favorite things about this time of year is the food and the smells of the season. And speaking of smells, I have to tell you about Native's awesome new holiday-inspired scented products. And you heard me talk about those fall scents, but oh boy, these holiday scents, sugar cookie, fresh mistletoe with cool, invigorating scent of cedar and sandalwood. I've got to order that. I've already got that candy cane on order. I can't wait to smell like a sugar cookie, really. You, If you haven't tried uh, native deodorant, don't you don't even need to listen to the rest of the ad. You, It's really a treat. So go to nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code SLEEP20 to get 20% off your first purchase at checkout. Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're about stopping the stink the right way. That's the native difference. And you've heard me talk about Native's legendary aluminum free deodorant. And Native's mission is to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by creating products that are made with simple ingredients like shea butter and coconut oil so you could smell great all day long. With classics and rotating seasonals, Native has something for everyone. Like I said, they have their holiday scented deodorant, body wash, wait, or toothpaste, and those come in scents like candy cane, sugar cookie, and fresh mistletoe for a limited time. They make amazing gifts. You could build yourself or a loved one these personalized product bundles by mixing and matching three of your favorite holiday scented products into a set. I give these all the time. And then every time that person smells sugar cookie or candy cane or mistletoe, they're going to think of you. So it is time to get your holiday orders in. Stay merry, happy, and fresh this holiday season. You will love Native's limited time seasonal products as much as I do. Go to nativedeodorant.com and use the code SLEEP20 to get 20% off your first purchase at checkout. That's nativedeodorant.com. And use the code SLEEP20 for 20% off. That's nativedeodorant.com, and the code is SLEEP20. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, we're talking about Season 2, Episode 8, Leap to Faith. Uh, And I'll read through my notes first. Sean's at desk, a red report in folders, covers, uh, there's a, I noticed this, I didn't think it came up in the episode. There's a, like a small black box on Sean's right. I thought it was going to play out in the episode and I wanted to pay attention to it, but it, it doesn't. I don't think it plays. I don't know. Zoom on Michael, hair out of whack. Michael shocked. I'm jubilant. High council promoted, thumbs down. Uh, Senior staff pin, chapter two. Everybody's in the waiting room. We see uh, the Soul Squad. I mean, the, we see the tea carts. Uh, Chidi standing, arms crossed on the. L- well, if you're on Ch- to Chidi, would be Chidi would be on the left side of the room. If you're facing Chidi, Chidi would be on the right side of the room. Or no, maybe not. Maybe if I was facing, maybe Chidi thinks Chidi's on the right, and I think Chidi's on the left. I'm just not good at. Uh... And then there's like a love seat or a sofa. Eleanor and Tahani are sitting down, and Jason is sitting on the arms of the sofa. I did a diagram, but again, I didn't like it's from above, so I don't know. I said, well, which side's the wall? But I think Chidi's on the left if we're facing them. If we're the wall that says, welcome to the good place, Chidi may be on the left or on the right. 
Uh, Jason covers everything or cool cloud. Cool cloud. He saw a cool cloud. I don't know what that covers everything means. I think he covers everything with Tahani. Sean comes out open at the open. Michael and Sean. Oh, no. Janet is a little drunkish. Uh, magnets. Uh, I feel fine. Then the Soul Squad is having uh, a conference at Eleanor's house. Tahani throws some shade over Ben Affleck. Eleanor looks at table from the episode where Michael had his breakthrough at the end of the last episode before he went into his office and Sean was there. And again, strong thematic. I mean, wow. Like, is this is Good Place considered a sitcom? Because there's strong growth and change. So I don't think it is a sitcom. Uh, no, no offense to sitcoms, but Tahani shuts Jason down. Argue with you, open with you, ogre with you. Eleanor smiles. What? Who's with me? I'm down to argue with you. What's his Keebly, Keebly, Keebler Kyrie? Keebler Kyrie said, watched Kierkegaard. Oh, Keebler, what's his name? Keebly, Keebler said, Watchworth, uh, sandwich something. Kierkegaard, leap of faith. No, more of a leap into faith. And Eleanor says, we got to trust Michael. Uh, shook by do D- Derek uh, something shook by Derek charm. Tr- Eleanor trusts him. Sit of doubt, tumbling. Sit of doubting, bit of doubting. Jason slow shans. Uh, gold time cops. Don't worry. Some of this will become apparent when I actually run the episode. Uh, gold time cops, uh, Jason and Sean task, uh, Vicky shows up. It can't be Jason and Sean. Vicky shows up all mad. Jason and somebody talk though. Maybe, I don't know. No robots. Uh, man, mama wants a promotion. You heard? Uh, oh, Mama wants a promotion. You, ha- you heard? Uh, town, sh- town Square, Smoky, Table, Soul... S- oh, so there's a t- like a table like a, where there'd be a, like at a wedding or a presentation. The Soul... S- so long table in the front of the room with a podium in the middle. The Soul Squad's on the left uh, of the table, though they would say they were on the right of the podium. Though if you're facing them, you'd say they're on the left. If you were giving seat assignments, I'd, I don't know, I guess you'd say you're sitting to the right of the podium. Uh, there's a thumbs down uh, symbol on the podium. Sean is sitting on the right with flowers and water. Michael whispers to Janet. Vicky watches. All the bad place people are full of joy. It's a, a comedy roast. Derek Bortles. Vol- Michael's wearing a velour suit, kind of a blue-gray color. The demons love his humor, even though it's not very good. And then at 11 minutes left in the episode, a party really starts, which we'll pause for after we run through my notes. Uh, so I was wrong, Eleanor says. And then we cut to commercial because they think, oh, no, we really are going to the bad place. Uh, then we're at the night of the party. Bad Janet is DJing. Michael sucks now. Blake Bortles is a cool name. Derek. Derek Bortles. Uh, something name. Eleanor smiles. It's a dumb name. Oh, so that Eleanor realizes uh, that's a trick. Uh, well, so there's a three-headed dragon at some point during the party. Michael whispers to Janet again. Michael has a very confident look on his face. Uh, Vicky tries to something free. Janet, Victoria comes maybe. Oh, no, she calls her Victoria. Janet calls her Victoria. Pause for the morning after. 
The humans are ex exca es escaping. Party's over. I got call another train. Vicky, you didn't. You aided the humans. Uh, Sam, the neighbor flood. Scan the neighborhood. Gas for Vicky. Free disaster. Gooey cocoon. Michael asks Sean for something. Everyone else on the train. Train pulls out. Michael's so sad. It was like the Goonies a little bit. Uh, I don't know why I put that. I guess he was so sad. He went over the top. Me, it was like when, it, like the, oh, I guess it made, reminded me of the moment with Chunk and, um, uh, I forget the, the char other character's name. You're going to live with us now, Sloth. Uh, Leap into faith, Janet hung over, flashback, use Janet's Derek clues. Transform last swing. Runs off. Use Derek to drive the train. Hang on to your butt cheeks. Uh, you under the trolley. 1,200 clues. So glad. Framed Vicky. Something smooth. Vicky. Something hiding. Something. Oh, apologize for roast. Take a moment. We got a chance. Hope and Mindy, like pretend, uh, for Vicky. All right, so let's run the episode now. And uh, Michael's ties loose. Sean's there. Shut the door. Have a seat. Zoom on Michael. Red reports. Uh, you know, we all laughed at you, Michael. Thomas Edison of incompetence. So, so picks up late, right where the last left off. You pulled it off. Uh, things are amazing. These reports are remarkable. Humans are really unhappy than even our most successful bad place things. I'm jubilant. Sean like has no shows no emotion. So, and we're gonna expand it. You're gonna oversee things. You're being promoted. There's your staff pin. Michael still has a gray checks checks workout on from the last couple episodes because not that much time's elapsed. Uh, He's like, this is all I ever wanted. Holy cow. Are we happy? Goes to the good place. Chapter 22. Yeah, Chidi is on the left and uh, Jason's on the right. He's really relaxed. Eleanor has one foot up on the sofa. And uh, they're talking about something. Jason's making jokes. Uh and then Tani says, Jason, we got to talk about stuff. Uh, and he says, yo, Chidi, you want to hear about the school cloud? Sean calls them in. Oh, they didn't realize Sean was there, I guess, until then. Michael says, I'm putting the burn on everybody. Surprise, suckers, you're in the bad place. Uh, they laugh. Uh, That's right, nerds. Everything around you is elaborate. Uh, way to fool you. Designed just for you. So we're in the bad place, Eleanor says. Why are you to, uh, to, so the, then they're like very confused, obviously, and unsure. They introduce, you do introduce Sean. I guess that was the first time meeting Sean. Sean doesn't know about the reboot, so he only thinks this is the second one. And you're going to go to the bad place, uh, and it's not going to be fun. Michael's laughing. He's even moving around. Michael's all true. Yes, it is, Eleanor. There's a zoom on Eleanor because he says, you're Rube. Uh, you thought you could be a better person. And uh, philosophy doesn't help. Uh, fear and trembling. Ha, ha, ha. He says, boring and stupid. I said, that sounds like kind of uh, sleep with me. I wouldn't use the S word. I'd say goofy. Goofy. And Michael says, let's have a farewell party tonight. You know, jam to some tunes. And trash the neighborhood. Maybe Janet can help. Janet, uh, she's in, um, oh, they think maybe your Janet would help. No, Janet's not going to help. Uh, she's wearing magnets. Uh, I don't understand this little plot point because I said Michael was the one that had the good place, Janet's. But, uh, oh, maybe because Janet's neutral. Now they're at Eleanor's. Jason's throwing a moss ball around. Chidi's in the butterfly chair. 
and uh, they're sit, they're all sitting down, kind of debating stuff. Uh, Eleanor's in the background, really. She then she looks over the table. She says, "No, can't believe we would you know trust anybody from the bad place. No, we're out of options." She's like, "Maybe we should just tell on him and make a deal. Maybe we should go to Mindy St. Clair's." Those are our only options. Uh, oh, D- D- Tanya really is not nice to Jason. She goes, yeah, you can't weigh in. And he's like, I was going to agree with you. Oh, okay. And they say, Eleanor, what do you think? And she says, I think we go. We, we got to trust Michael. Really good confidence. She stands. He's. We have to assume he's on our side. Who's with me? Nobody. Then she kind of goes over things. Uh, she, she, she's taking, really taking a leap into faith. Uh, Kierkegaard, super depressing religious guy. The buzzkill. Kira Cedric, Keebler's elves. No. Kierkegaard. Yeah. He used Michael used his name. Maybe he was telling us uh, to take a leap of faith. That was his thing. No, leap into faith. Uh, so Michael wants us to trust him. Spoke to him with after the Derek thing. He was shook, uh, talking about being human and ethics. I'm Eleanor's like, I believe him. And Tahani is saying, yeah, I don't know. They're talking about pancakes or something, crepes maybe. She goes, I don't think Michael's on the on the bad side. I think he's on the good side. Chidi's really thinking about it. Why would he say a leap of faith? Uh, why wouldn't he call it something else? Use other words. Jason says, this is getting out of hand. Maybe we should tell an authority figure. And they say, dude, where do you think we are? And then uh, they're back talking about Tahani and Jason being together. How'd you come up with that idea? Vicky storms in. Michael says, let me talk to her in the hall. She says, yo, you taking all the credit? And Michael says, don't worry, this could work out great for us. Uh, we just got to play it right. We can't tell, let Sean know that uh, something's off. So and they say, oh, she says, okay. That happens. We're all going down. So spread the word. No one talks about the reboots. Vicky says, "Fine. You better make this right, though." Mama want a promotion. You heard, and she walks off. Then we go to the roast situation. Michael's uh, he's really mean. Everybody's drinking out. A lot of people are drinking out of so- red solo cups, which is something you know that bad place people might do. There is yellow and red roses, or four bowls of them at the table, and water glasses. Janet just dipped her finger in her water glass. Michael Burns, Jason. There's also ashtrays. Jason's playing with an ashtray, I just noticed. Again, at some season, we'll see the bad place that that makes sense. Um, he says, yeah, Jaguars. He's just making fun of Jag- Everything's very over the top, uh... And Jason's like, uh, dude, the Jaguars aren't that bad. And, she, and Eleanor says, don't worry about it. Uh, they're just trying to make fun of uh, Michael's just acting. And then he goes after Tahani. And uh, he's, 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 he's very good at pretending like he's reading. It, it's a very good fake acting, even by the bad place people, even though they're not real. I mean, they're not really pretending to act. They're just laughing at Michael's jokes. And then he goes after Eleanor, uh, calling her, you know, a demon. And how could you think you deserve a medium place? Uh, you're not a good person. I say, wow, that really hurts. But Eleanor's looking at him with still confidence. Uh, and she even says, uh, ooh, yeah, she talks about Chidi and how, you know, he's being funny because he's not nice. She's like, we're good friends, though. And Michael says, don't worry about it. Uh, I don't need to talk about Chidi because no one talks about Chidi. And uh, you know, he, he's going on and on and on. Really good sport coat or suit coat. Uh, I can't see his pants. Navy uh, pocket square and bow tie. Some people are drinking out of bottles. Um 
Sean kicks back, back and laughs. Uh, Michael kicks up, and then the party starts. Giraffe running, fireworks, uh, smoke, giraffe, uh, got to commercial. Then it's night. Bad Janet. There's like some sort of um, spinning board like you'd see at a raffle with the money wheel, like a money wheel. And uh, they're playing a uh, puddle of mud. Yeah, people are still drinking out solo cups, having bonfires. Grandma got run over by reindeers up next. And all the bad place people are having a time. Soul Squad's watching. Even the, um, there's a bonfire in the fountain. And Eleanor says, yeah, maybe I was wrong. And, uh. Tiny says, I can't believe it. And she just says, yeah, I guess we got to tell Sean about the reboots and try to see if he'll go easy on us. Uh, or free Janet and go to Mindy's. Then Jason says, I can't believe he doesn't remember Derek, B- 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 Derek Bortles' name. Like, Blake Bortles' name, not Derek Bortles. That's a, not a cool name. And Jan- that's when Eleanor says, oh, then we see the three-headed dragon. Confident Michael whispers, uh, and uh, then Vicky rolls up on Michael. Relax, Vicky. Enjoy yourself. It's a party. Come on. And Vicky says, hey, what does Michael keep whispering to you? Something, something, Vicky, something, something. Can I braid your hair? Then Vicky's trying to let uh, Janet go, and she kind of gets caught by Gail. She's still trying to feed f- Free Janet, get your own bracelets. This next morning, people are waking up. Uh, DJ's still playing the music and uh, same songs. Uh, Bottle of Mud and Grandma Got Run Over by Reindeer at the lot together. People are getting up uh, from sleeping. There's uh, graffiti. Great work, Sean says to Michael. Then Vicky says, I got some inform- in- inf- interesting information. Oh, humans are getting away. Train goes off. Uh, Vicky tries to frame Michael. Michael, uh, Sean says, scan for the humans. Call another train. How'd they free Janet? Somebody tells on Vicky. Oh, uh, Gail does. She says, yeah, was, Vicky uh, was trying to do it. And they say, oh, no, Vicky, were you trying? Were you jealous of Michael? She says, no, Michael's a liar. There's people in the back. There's some really good. <laughs> I didn't notice this until just now, but you should definitely watch. Let's see what time is left. Uh, so there's about seven and a half minutes left in the episode. You got to watch the uh, extras get on the uh, train drunk uh, and hung over. Uh, really good stuff. Uh, Bad Janet does the neighborhood, scans the neighborhood. I didn't find uh, any of the humans. I did find some gas in my rear. Vicky gets cocooned. It's very gooey. We're going to have to keep this on the down low. Everybody's got to keep it quiet. Michael, you shut the neighborhood down. How do we get the humans back from Mindy's? Sean says, I'll figure that one out. I'll start the papers. Get rid of this neighborhood. We'll see you later, buddy. Train heads out, and we see the Soul Squad hiding on the tracks. Uh, and Jason's laughing. Everybody else is stressed. There's a zoom on Michael. He starts crying. So, like, over the top in, a, like, a, just a very interesting way. And he hugs Eleanor. She says it's okay. Janet still has her bracelets on. Then they go back to the train station. They go, he takes off her bracelets, uh, and they run through. Wait a second. How did this all work out? Uh, leap into faith. Uh, Michael says, I left you clues. And Janet says, you know, I'm hungover. So tell me what ha- recap what, how you figured it out, but quietly. Michael sent us a code. We had to crack it. Jason figured out the first clue. Derek, bike portals, Derek portals. So it's like a little bit like a mystery. And uh, then we see Eleanor crack it. Wait a second. Uh, Michael wouldn't have fr- couldn't forget Blake Bortles' name. You say it a million times a day. So he must be telling us to use Janet's Derek for something. There was clues in the roast. Uh, 
let's go to the train station and brainstorm. So then Eleanor goes, okay, what did he say? Tahani, anything meaningful for you? My life was pointless and empty, but no, something we didn't know that stood out. Uh, yeah, the end of the party, the last song. Oh, okay, last song. There's an idea there. The host would leave during the last song. That doesn't happen. Uh, so maybe we're supposed to wait till the end of the party when everyone's most distracted. Use Derek to drive the train, Chidi says, because he has Janet's powers. Uh, go. Then they call it, Janet comes in. Go get Derek from your void. So I'll get Derek. Derek's good at driving trains. Also, the like the payoff at the end is really good with Derek and Mindy St. Clair. So they say, okay. And then they say, wait a second, must be another clue. When should we go? And how? Well, not a medium place. You don't deserve it. Uh, this is the place you're supposed to be, Eleanor. Okay, so we have to stay here. So it's a bit of a jump, but it makes sense. Uh, so Derek's supposed to take the train, but uh, we shouldn't get on there. And then it says, Chidi, didn't you want to be under the trolley? Oh, yeah. So we hide under the train at the end of the party, and you drive off. Uh, so you do that at the last song of the night, Derek. Okay. And then we'll fly solo, maximum Derek. Uh, and then we hunt, hit it, and then no one knew. They scanned for us, but we were under the train, so they couldn't see us. We got all the clues. Michael says, I left 1,200 clues. But, you know, you're a human, so your brain's good. But I got, you got enough to figure it out. Uh, how did you escape? To, well, I framed Vicky. Not exactly ethically. You know, I just whispered stuff in Janet's ear, made her paranoid. Something, something, Vicky, something, something is what you whispered. So Janet was able to tell Vicky the truth. Uh and then they free Janet. They frame her for the escape. Oh, boy. Guys, I want to apologize. I had to sell it since everyone was watching. That was funny, right? Uh, no. Tahani was good. And then they're happy. All the bad place. We might actually have a chance to get to the real good place. Everything we wanted, Chidi says. And they say, I hope we like Mindy's present, which was Derek and uh, some other things that some uh, Vicky was looking to um, s s uh, ski in the powder, or snowboard in the powder, fresh powder. So, so Mindy says, finally a companion I can work with, uh, and the episode ends. All right, so we'll just roll into the next episode. Uh, let's see, Michael. There, it picks up right where we left off. Uh, they're leaving the train station. Get out of this miserable shirt hole, not so fast. And Michael says, it's not easy getting to the good place. There's no train. I have to make up a vehicle. And Jason says, is it Optimus Prime? And there's multiple great Optimus Prime jokes. And Jason has this great moan he makes. And, but Eleanor says, we're in a hurry, so let's go. Uh, and then to, there's a joke with Tahani in business class. So Michael pulls up these plans. He starts trying to figure it out. It looks like an astro lab. Janet, he says, Janet, build this. Oh, forgot to log in with my security question. Give me a second. My childhood part, cores off. Uh, and then a balloon, a hot air balloon, a golden hot air balloon appears. Jason says, dope. Uh, we're going to the good place. We just saw some, what does that say? Oh, rest in eternal misery, suck. Is, that's one of the, one of the pieces of, uh, and then another one says rest in pee. Uh, so that was like some of the bad place uh, notes they left. A gold balloon, Jason calls shotgun. Ultimate shotgun riding on the top. A uh, good place. Chapter 23. Uh, I think it's called Best Self. or Is that all it's called? Yeah, Best Self. Uh, and they're having their last batch of uh, Froyo. 
Jason enjoyed the Froyo. No one else did. And then they say, okay, what is going to be, what's your good place? Uh, Because Jason hopes he gets more Froyo in the good place. But, you know, this was giving me a tummy tum tum. So that's how I knew it wasn't going to be the good place. Uh, Eleanor says, a beach, my ties, and being able to catch up on my texts uh, on on my phone. Uh, Tahani says together, but, uh, separate houses would be great. Uh, why more Froyo? GD wants an unlimited library, philosopher heroes, rigorous intellectual debate, and air conditioning. Soulmates hope they're real. He goes, oh, I mean, you know, all of us get soulmates. Janet comes back. Uh, okay. Who's ready to go ballooning? And there's this white portal they have to walk through, which Janet will say, only those who have got self-realization can go through there where their soul shall be weighed and the best version of herself or passage will be denied. And Eleanor says, I think I am the best version of myself. Uh, ever, you know, with sort of Chidi's training, we should, we got, I think we're going to be fine. I'm going to go for it. She takes a breath, she steps through, it turns green. And she was like, I didn't even believe anything I was saying, but uh, whatever. Tahani goes through, it turns green. Jason crosses his fingers, it goes green. Chidi smiles, like this big funny smile, it goes red. And Jason goes, okay, it's a pattern, green, 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 red. She says, yeah, I had some doubts and some, like, so maybe that's what's causing this. Uh, and they go back to the town square. They talk about it. She says, this is our best of versions of ourselves. But it can't be because there was so many 802 versions of us. I don't know if this is my best self. Uh, what if it's 85 or 322 or 558? And Jason says, or 420. And uh, he goes, who knew if there was even the best cheaty yet? Uh, so he's stressed. Uh, this cheaty might be an imposter. And Eller says, calm down. Like, you made all of us better. So we became the best versions of ourselves because of your help. So it doesn't matter. 492 or whatever. Because the best version of me is my effect on the world around me, not my self-image. Oh, boy. Deep, deep stuff there. Deep cut. Uh, and Eleanor says, okay, let's go back and weigh ourselves, like, go through the portal. But then they show a quick shot of her having doubts. Chidi goes first, gets on board. It's a really nice effect, too, the, the level of green. Tahani goes second. She gets on Jason crosses his arms and his fingers like a water slide. Eleanor's got Stan Smith's on. She says, she goes red, cheaties in my head, cuts a commercial. She says, okay. And then she says, oh, by, I had, took this necklace from your house to honey. That probably, I, I apologize for stealing that. Still red. Okay, then we have this gift basket. Let's take a look at this thing. Uh, Janet's holding a gift basket. It has, uh, let's see if I can, can I zoom on that? Oh, I kind of can. Cut. There's chips, some sort of egg. It looks like a giant bell. Um, probably some bags of candy or something. Eleanor says, remember when I was on the tape at Mindy's and I was vulnerable and honest? Uh, that Eleanor is better than this one. And she goes, that's not easy for me to say, but, you know, that's a better version of myself. So, and they say, well, Michael, tell us about the re- what reboot was that? Uh, he goes, 119. Instead of yogurt, it was kebab places. And... Uh, he goes, you had a pet that went to the bathroom a lot. She goes, and Eleanor says, what about Chidi and I's relationship? Well, those are ethics classes, a lot of time together. One night you handed him a tissue before he sneezed, and that made him fall in love with you, that simple act. And then you took a walk by a lake, had your first kiss. Michael doesn't like the idea of humans kissing. He's not in for that. Uh, and I don't know, relationship bloomed after that. Uh, 
And Tani says, okay, there's some unrelated, you know, we, we all got to talk out our relationships. So let's do that. And then or she goes, why don't you stay behind and I'll go ahead, book a table, like an advanced team. And with the bat, you know, you can stay behind. So then she turns red. She tries to tell the machine who she is. Janice says, I'm the best version of myself because I'm constantly updating and then Eleanor says, no, you're not, because you haven't talked about t- your feelings with Jason. You, you haven't talked that out. Love triangle. And she goes, no, it's a five-dimensional blob, love is. Janet tries to get on the balloon. The machine goes to Christmas red and white stripes. Michael gets a tummy tum tum because everybody's disagreeing. And he goes, oh, I'm having a lot of emotions. Uh, after sad... He goes, you're only supposed to have two emotions. They say, Michael, what's going on? He goes, well, the problem isn't any of you. I faked it. This balloon's a fake. I don't know how to get to the good place. Never have, never will. And Eller says, wait a second. And Michael says, sorry. It cuts a commercial again. And then they say, okay, so you had a plan to get us to a good place. That was all made up. Okay. Michael says, yeah, I thought if I could buy us some time, I could figure it out. Tried a billion ways. Billion and twelve, actually. None of those worked. The only way so, so far to get to the good place is to be a good person on Earth. Uh, Tahani's miffed. Uh, everybody's mad. And Michael said, but while I was trying to figure that out, you know, I was taking the ethics, learning it was bad to lie. So I failed at a good place and I learned out there in my ways. Rock bottom for a demon. But I really did want us to get in. Jason says, so what happens now? Well, Sean's going to figure out Mindy's, uh, you know, then he'll figure out somebody who's helping you, realize that's me, and then we'll be in the bad place again. Back where we started, and you're mad. Eleanor says, no, I'm disappointed. And he realizes that it's worse, so we're out of options, complete, not completely. Eleanor doesn't give up. Uh, we can do what shell shops have always done when the chips are down, drink heavily, ignore our problems. Janet, a million bottles of booze, please. So we go back to the town square. And there's some music playing. There's some tables and lights. uh, And Tahani sits down with Jason. And he talks about wishing he could pop the balloon. And Tahani says, listen, I think it's best we, uh, you know, take a break here. End our relationship. Probably I better find my own self-worth and happiness. Uh, in the past, uh, you know, I'd uh, encounter obstacles and I'd say, let me speak to your manager. And, you know, there's no one that can fix things for me but me. And Jason talks about his mom was a manager at a pet store that he borrowed some stuff from with his mom. Uh, but it was also a dream. And Tahani laughs and says, okay, thanks. He kisses him on his cheek. Eleanor's drinking margaritas with Chidi. And she'll, they're buzzed. Uh, she says, geez, just in case we're ethically doomed, I do have feelings for you. So, And I know you don't feel the same way, so don't say anything. And that fills me with anger and confusion because, you know. But uh, I just wanted you to know the truth. She looks up and she goes, I don't want to hear what you have to say about it. And she goes, here's the thing about me. You know the sound of a fork in a garbage disposal makes? That's how my brain is. I said, maybe you should listen to sleep with me, Chidi. Constant grinding, things I'm afraid of, things I want, want to come or want to want. Uh, but the point is... You know, we met under pretty wild circumstances, uh, and that just makes the grinding harder. I wish we'd meet the way normal people would meet, like at a philosophy lecture, or you come by my office uh, looking for help with philosophy, and Eleanor goes, that's not how normal people meet. And then they get on the dance floor, she makes a toast. Uh, we don't know which version of ourselves this is, but who cares? Uh, this is the good people we've all become. To Eleanor, our official, unofficial leader, you have some heart and grit in that scrappy little frame. Tahani says, that's the nicest thing you'll ever say, babe. 
to Janet, the best robot, not a robot to a girl, not a girl. Jason says straight up hottie. Yes. And Janet says, they say, Janet, why don't you say something? She goes, Janet's typically don't give speeches. Uh, And then they say, Michael, how about a toast? Uh, Who's the best for Michael's definitely the best version of himself. uh, Chidi says, uh, he admitted that he made a mistake, admitted he was wrong. That makes him better than 90% of humans. And Eleanor says, it wasn't Michael's fault. We, like, uh, we couldn't have got there, too. You know, we're not, you know, none of us are that great. Uh, the point is, we forgive you. So so deep, so much stuff in this little simple box. Uh, just try your best. Uh, oh, that was my favorite line. I talked over it. Hold on, let me rewind. So Eleanor says, uh, after she's, you know, put, she goes, we forgive you. You tried to find a way to the good place. Uh, and that's the greatest thing someone can do. Just try your best. So we make you an honorary human. They toast. And now it's kind of champagne. Here's a human starter kit we put together for you. Car keys to lose. It says Michael starter kit. Uh, Band-aids uh, for human bodies. Stress ball that I'll, you know, think about recycling and never will. Thinking I'll use it one day. And uh, uh, like a book uh, on food and stuff. uh, Stuff I have no real use for. Welcome to being human to Michael. Then they do some dancing. There's like fun dancing. Jason does a robot. Uh, Janet does some cool reverse dance. Jason and uh, Chidi have a little dance-off. Then there's some slow dancing. Eleanor and Chidi do some real close slow dancing where she puts his head on, or she puts her head against his chest. His eyes are closed. He's holding her hand. Then there's like the like 5 a.m., 4 a.m. in the park partying after you've been partying all night thing. Picnic. Text comes in from Sean, shut everything down, get on the train, we'll find the humans, don't worry about it. Uh, sorry, auto, make it, we'll make them soup, sorry, then me say soup soon, okay, bye. And then it kind of puts up a dull thing, what do you guys think the bad place is going to be? Jason says a Skrillex concert waiting for the bass to drop and it never does. Uh, Eleanor says they're camping. I wouldn't like, uh, you know, camping's not my thing. Chidi says, well, I'm pretty good at that. I, I mean, making everything tough. Uh, Donnie says Swiss Alps, uh, in the off season in autumn. And you'll probably end up running the bad place. Uh, and she's kind of doing a little bit of, uh, Tahani. And then they're all making fun of it. And then she goes, wait a second. And then Tahani thinks of the solution. We should ask for the manager. I thought there was a judge we could talk to, Michael. Uh, disputes between the good place and the bad place. A head honcho. We could wag a finger at disapprovingly. Michael says the judge really rarely talks to us. Plus, you got to go to a, through a portal. We can't get to the portal because we'd have to go through the bad place in plain sight. And then reach and pass through the portal without getting caught. Convince the judge to hear us out, uh, even though we didn't go through the problem. You know, the case isn't winnable. Eleanor takes a swig from a wine bottle and says, let's do it. Uh, Jason does his half smile. What do we have to lose? Come on. Michael's breathless. Uh, well, all I wanted to know is what it feels like to be human. Now we're going to do the most human thing of all. Something futile with a ton of unearned confidence and fail spectacularly. Get up, everybody. Get some rest tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to the bad place. First thing. Cuts. We go back to Eleanor's house. Chidi says goodbye to his chalkboard. Eleanor says goodbye to her uh, big shoe to small car, car friends. Goodbye, house. Goodbye, whatever it was, postmodern. Michael's at the train station. Bad Janet shows up. He marbleizes her as she's kind of doing her boarding speech. Uh, so she's marbleized. 
he throws her. Oh no, he doesn't. He just picks it up. Uh, this is, are you okay to leave this fake good place behind when I, Oh, this is funny. So let me read this dialogue. Eleanor says, you could, okay, I'm okay with you guys. If no, no, As long as I'm with you guys, I'm always in the fake good place. And Eleanor says, wait a second. Uh, he goes, okay, the real bad place was the friends we made along the way. No, doesn't work. Uh, in a way, the good place was inside the bad place all along. Or the bad place all along. Technically, we'll give it to you. It's, oh, I made an amorphism, or however you say it. And he says, next stop, the actual bad place. And then we watch the neighborhood deteriorate around them as the train slowly pulls out and uh, Michael's whole neighborhood uh, goes into kind of a cubular thing, floats off, and the episode ends. But don't worry, we still have a few minutes here to read through my notes. Chapter 23, Jason, Tahani, Froyo, Ill, Mai Tais, Eleanor, Safone, Everyone Wishes, Wrong Up a Sweet, and Soulmates, uh, Balloon, Cool, Cool, End, We Get, Got This, Shirt Tail, Sade, Eleanor gives grow, I grow in, I go. Uh, Tahani in, Jason, eyes closed, fingers crossed, oh dip. Chidi does not make it, doctor freak out, and not just a metaphor. 85, imposter, this is simple. You debate 492 or who I am, my effect uh, on others. Uh, come on, dorks. Uh, Eleanor's Questar face. Chidi goes green. Tahani. Janet. Big basket of question mark. Eleanor. Nope. Uh, give necklace. Uh, that's even better than these. Robert 119, reheat 11 arrow, pause at 1130. Maybe that's what like that we looked at for basket. Oh, yeah, we looked at the basket. Lake water, first kiss, bloomed. Tahani, everyone who is green, advanced team. It is I, Tahani. Step into scale, Xmas colors, I think I broke it. Michael, so many emotions, uh, something, it is a fake, no idea how to get into the good place, ad. So lie, Bitcoin maze plus 12 phones. Michael apologizes, a human, error of my ways. So what happens next? Not mad, disappointed, not completely out of options. When chips are down, pause. Jason and Tahani talk balloons. You and me, cool. Spoke to the man, your manager. No one who can fix it. It was all human. Kiss on the cheek. Drunk Eleanor and Cheaty. Magnetism, they are in balloon. Cheaty's brain is like a fork in a garbage disposal. Met the way normal people meet. Eleanor laughs at him. Toast, I like who we are now. That's all underlined. I like who we are now. Remember that. Uh, one more toast to Michael. At least you turned, uh, tried, we forgive you. Just try. Human starter kits. No real use for that, uh, to being human. Dance party. Unforgettables playing. Slow dance. Drunk late night picnic. Laughing Jason takes what will bad place be? Swiss Alps, that's it. Speak to the manager. 
head wig, hand wag finger at it. Uh, rarely hears cases, portal, walk through bad place. Next time, scenes, let's do it. Uh, most human thing of all, get some rest going to the bad place. Eleanor's talking to Cheaty, challenge, or, and uh, to, uh, to, to the uh, big shoot, uh, small card friends. Hours, close, train station, 822, paperclip, marbled. Long at, I'm with you guys. Uh, Michael Clapp, a plunic, uh, next stop, uh, Actual bad place. So, yeah, the next stop is the actual bad place. Uh, and your next stop is uh, Dreamland or another episode. I'll be here with you. Uh, but first, let's do some thank yous. Thanks, everybody. All right, I want to thank everybody who became a re- uh, patron recently. William, Olivia, and Stephanie. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Nicole, Difa, and uh, Mitchell, thanks, 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 and good night. Isla, Kirsten, and Brenda, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Joe, Leslie, and Erica, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Jelena, Patty, and Mary Allen, thanks, 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 and good night. Hannah, Shania, and Justin, thanks, 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 and good night. Emily, Stephen, and Jessica, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Adam, Herxer and Myrna, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Melissa, Jacob, and Kelly, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show. Uh, I couldn't do without all of you, uh, and good night. All right, everybody, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And you know, if you listen to this podcast, you know I'm a big believer in professional licensed therapy, working with a therapist. It's a part of my life every single week. And it's something I encourage people all the time. And sometimes people in my life can have preconceived notions about therapy. And it really does help when I talk to them more about their other professional relationships. I'm like, you know, you go to a doctor for your body. You deal with a lawyer if you're buying a house or you have a legal question, you wouldn't try to work that out on your own. Most people don't fix their own cars. And those analogies are really apt for therapy. You know, while we brush our own teeth, we don't fix our own cavities. We trust the dentist for that. And going to therapy is working with an expert. It's routine maintenance for your mental and emotional wellness. It doesn't mean something's wrong with you. Therapy means you're investing in yourself to keep your mind healthy. And not only do you benefit, but every person you come in contact with benefits from your therapeutic relationship, really. And if you're flourishing, the whole world benefits. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Why invest in everything else and not your mind? Mind. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Sleep With Me listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash SleepWithMe. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash SleepWithMe. BetterHelp.com slash SleepWithMe. Thanks, everybody.